And so once our controller is up and running, we can then SSH into it and connect to it. So we need to take note of the public IP and then we just SSH to it uh, as we would normally. So we, and so we can just verify a few settings first. So we can just check we're in our home directory. Who am I? Or OPC user. And we can just confirm the Terraform is installed. So Terraform is pre-installed on the latest images. So if we just do a search there, we can see it's installed. And we can also do a check for the latest version of Python on the machine. And it's 2.75. Um, we can take a look around the directory. So we can see. So if we want to navigate into uh, OPC, for example, we can just go into this hidden file, OPC. And this is where we store our profiles, which we'll talk about shortly. But we can also... Uh, verify the version we can also verify that the tool is actually downloaded so we can run a command opc migrate and then the version and this gives us the version of the opc migrate cli tool command line interface tool and we can also run a, a help command and we can pipe this into more so if we want to read it slowly so there's various options for this tool. Basically, it's three tools. When we use the OPC migrate command. It's a, first of all, it's a discovery and translate tool. And later on, we'll see that we can migrate uh, VMs and block volumes with the OPC migrate instance command. And it's also a third tool which backs up and restores block volumes. And we can do so with OPC migrate or SM. So, all the details are there in this help sort of help functionality on the in the command line interface. So to verify um, the version of the tool itself, we can cut out the screen, the source, and then the version text. So we can see we're using the latest 1.9 version. So this is updated all the time, but it's usually available from Oracle images on in the console when you're launching an instance. So I'll just have a look at the folder structure again. So you can see this tool uses Ansible and various scripts. And we can navigate to the OPC profiles folder. If we don't specify any profile, it goes to the default one here, which is which I've got listed here. But if this isn't created, you need to create this yourself. So, so I can just cut this default profile file out the screen. And you can see I have my endpoints on my path. My endpoint to username um, for each basically service. I could enter a lot more like the load balancing service or different path services, but this is just a simple example. And we can add to this later on. So um, it needs the username and various credentials for uh, different services. So you can find these details on the console under the dashboard. For example, if I go to compute and just go view details. I have my uh, REST endpoint, my ID domain it needs for some in some cases. And likewise for storage, we can find the details here from the dashboard. We have the endpoint and any information we need. Sometimes it requires the ID. So we can see for some services like uh, the past services, it requires the ID. And this is referring to this, this information here. And for object storage, it just needs a, an endpoint and a user using the following syntax where this is your identity domain and then this is your username. And so if you don't provide a profile, it goes with this default profile, but we can also create other ones. So if I do an LS, I can copy this uh, default profile to another one. And then I can edit this, uh, this different profile. So if I want to edit the, the different profile John, I'm sorry, it's sudo vi john. And then if I want, I can take some parts of this out. So for example, if I want to take the past services out, um, I could just remove these. So if I wanted to simplify it and just have the object storage here, I can do that. And then we need to just write and quit this. And then we've got two different profiles. So we'll show us, we can see how we can use the different profiles shortly. 
So we don't store any passwords in these profile files for security reasons, but we can create a password file or else we can provide it at, when we're prompted for when we run these um, tools. So we're always prompted for it the first time we run the tool anyway. And so we can run this tool shortly, but we can just install a few things, just make sure a few things are installed before we run the tool. So um, first of all, we can run, just make sure we have installed the uh, uh, yum utils, so we can do sudo yum install yum utils. And if this isn't installed already, it will install it now. And we can also install the yum config manager. And we just need to install graphviz if we want to see the graphical output from the reports. So the discovery and translation tool provides us reports in different formats. The default is JSON. We can also get a report in an Excel uh, spreadsheet format, or from, we can get a Terraform configuration file, or we can get a graphical PDF, a sort of visual um, a footprint of the of the of our resources. So the default output from this discovery tool is JSON, and then once we run the tool, it's OPC migrate discover, and this will prompt us for the password initially. It's just given us a warning. We've no load balancer uh, credential set up, but I've no load balancer running in this tenancy at the moment. And so it confirms in the output that it's discovering these resources, and it'll give us a, a JSON output in a moment because I've just selected the defaults here. I haven't added anything in. So this is a sort of a shared account with a lot of resources running on it. So it's just taking its time to discover them. So you can see it lets us know that it's stored the output for this in this JSON file. So we can, our command line session, if we just want to cut this out to the screen and put it into a more command, just to read it slowly. But you can see it contains comprehensive information about the, all the resources running on the account. I'm not going to go through it all in detail. This is a large file, but we can also run a different command. So um, remember, we have two profiles set up, so if I wanted to run this command just for the profile um, John, the other profile I, connect, I created, so I'm not going to use the default one in this case, it's going to use a different profile. And it will do the same process again, only spit it out to a different um, file. So this can be useful if you've got different profiles for different use cases or different requirements, if you've got less resources to move, etc. So you can see it's it's output these these results to a different JSON file, and we can use these uh, output files as inputs to subsequent commands we'll run. Um, so you can see um, we have two JSON files now. If we wanted to, we can run a few different commands as well. So so there's different flags we can run with this command. If we want to run the the command with the network parameter, um, this will generate a report of all the networking objects, and it'll, it'll, the report will contain all the security lists in the shared network and a list of all the IP networks along with any uh, ACLs or the access control lists, etc. Et for each IP network. So we can let this run and output a file as well. So you can see this just spits it out of the screen. In fact, we don't. If we wanted to, we could pipe it into a file also, though. Um, we we can also run this command just with the report flag, and this will generate a spreadsheet of the resources. So you can see it's uh, generating this into an XLS sheet, and we can see that uh, generated in the in the results here. So, so we can also run an OPC migrate summary command, and this command will take um, the resource uh, JSON file as an input. So we need to run the discovery tool first to have this um, file as an input and the summary command will output a, output to the terminal um, a summary of the resources running on this account, this OCI Classic account. But if we wanted to we could put this into a file so we could just call it summary and run this. And so once it runs we can just do an ls and confirm that file is there and maybe cut it out to the screen. And we can see it's a fairly substantial file, so we can run this command and pipe it into a more command just to read it slowly. And it gives us basically sort of totals of the resources running on this account. 
So we can also run a command. Um, we ran the OPC migrate network command earlier, and it sort of spits it out to the screen. So we can also obviously uh, put this into a file as well. So we have this information in a file. So it does give us a few error messages there. This is a fairly large um, shared account with a lot of resources on it. So we won't pay too much attention to that. If we do an LS, the file is created here, but um, we want to give it a more descriptive name. So we'll call it file and network. And now if we do an LS and we cut this out to the screen, we can have a look at the details. So you can see it gives a list of all the network and um, resources, the security list, the IP networks and um, different uh, resources, network resources running in this account, which is quite substantial. And so we've previously created, or we've previously installed GraphViz, and we can therefore run this command to create um, a graphical representation of all the relationships between the resources on the account. So we can just run OPC migrate and then graph. And so if it's a large account, it can take a few minutes for this to run because it's just analyzing all the resources and building a sort of a visual representation of what's running on the account. So we now have a PDF of a, the graph viz diagram and we can see that listed here in our, in our, in our directory. It's a PDF file so we can download this to our desktop and view it or VNC connection where we can see the visual desktop as well and open up the file. And so with any of these commands, we can get more information just by attaching the help flag. So we can run this on the OPC migrate command itself or any of its, um, any other of its parameters as well. So for example, we can run this command with graph and find out more about the parameters and the options available. So we've got different options to filter out certain resources or to include and exclude resources, for example. So there's a lot of different, um, it's a powerful tool, a lot of different options to, to be granular about what we're migrating and what we're sort of reviewing and summarizing. So we've also got different uh, flags we can use to generate a Terraform configuration file, but that requires a plan file, which we'll generate in the next video.